Here we go. Oh, here we go. Another week, another containers from the couch. Yes, indeed. It is Monday. Uh, I don't even know the date. I just know it's Monday, which is a, a victory in my book. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> let's let's welcome everybody. So welcome. Uh, this is containers from the couch. I'm Adam Keller. And the gentleman next to me is Brent Langston. Thank and, you. I didn't know. Was I saying it? Were you saying it? Who knows? <laughs> I didn't know either. It was really, we got to work on these cues. But um, anyway, so thanks for joining us. If, if you've seen our show before, we talk all things containers on AWS, containers in general. Um, and, you know, with that, uh, we had our first annual inaugural containers, cloud containers conference, otherwise known as C3. Uh, last Thursday, which went really well. Um, we did some live Q&A there, had some really great feedback um, from everyone on Twitch. And that has kind of inspired us this week. So Brent, what are we doing? What are we doing today? Well, you know, we had some questions uh, last week on Thursday uh, that were all about the whole uh, Docker ECS integration that Docker has been working on with us. And so, uh, that was that session was going to happen after Thursday's live Q and A. Uh, so I thought, hey, let's schedule a follow up. So basically, we'll follow up and we'll uh, explore that integration. So we're going to take a look at uh, what Docker's been working on, uh, integrating uh, the you know improving the developer experience and all that stuff. And um, the goal will be get some containers running out on ECS and we're going to see like what, you know, what the options are and what we can do. So all this is beta. Uh, Docker is marked at beta. Um, so there's probably going to be a lot of rough edges. Uh, we're ready for that. We're going to explore. We might find some stuff that we would like to work differently. We'll, you know, we'll call that stuff out. We'll, we'll uh, offer up some opinions along the way. Um, but, yeah, we're just going to check it out and we're going to see uh, how things how things work. Yes. And so if you didn't uh, catch the conference or catch the uh, announcement last week, um, basically Docker announced in, in partnership with us, AWS, um, support for the Docker Compose CLI uh, integration with ECS. So essentially, you know, if, if you're not familiar with Docker Compose, Docker Compose is a way to you know, if, if you're working with Docker over and over again, you know, you, you start with Docker run, you have your ports, you, your environment variables, all these different options you pass into, you know, your Docker container to run it. Well, from a development experience, you, you don't want to keep running Docker run, Docker run, remembering all these different components, these different parameters that you want to pass in. So Compose came out basically, which is a way to have a, a YAML spec of here's my container, you know, for my application any dependent containers I want to run with that application and then just simply run Docker compose up and it will bring them up and tie them all together. Hey, is that Randall Hunt in the audience today? It is. I, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a celebrity sighting almost to, to right. see Randall pop in. So I figured I would just show everybody in the, in the rest of the audience. Hey, Randall, welcome. Thanks for watching. It's this is kind of a big deal. Like I, I feel like him being here, we're going to get at least a hundred more viewers right now. So I hope so. He, uh, he should be tweeting about our show from now on. Uh, oh. He says he's excited for this integration. He's really looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> so Let's see how it goes. And, and, uh, in case, you know, Randall, just, you know, uh, full, full disclosure here. We are, uh, we're doing an unboxing here. So this is like, you know, when kids on YouTube open up these, you know, little toys and have this fun experience. We're doing that with this integration. So that's right. We're hoping we don't unbox a brick. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we don't think we will. So instead, we're going to unbox this integration and, and just see how it works. So let's just let's get started. Let, let's let's go to the command line. Let's see what we're doing today. Sweet. One okay. second. You got your screen live. Yes. OK. All right. So <clears throat> let's first talk about like the Docker Compose experience. So what I've done is I've pulled down a couple of our um, repos that we use in our workshops, um, some things we have fun, you know, building in these workshops, 
we, we've built kind of a re repetitive process around them. So Brett and I figured, let's take what we've used. And by the way, we did this with uh, with Copilot and it went off without, without a hitch. Like it was super smooth. We we're able to deploy these um, existing images. So we're gonna do that same thing here. So let's look at a Docker Compose file. This is very basic. So when you look at my Compose file, I'm defining my version of, of Docker Compose. Um, and then my services. So we have our, our front end service and our Node.js service. So if you're familiar with the, the workshops and what we've done, we generally have um, a front end and it talks to two back end services. So the front end is Ruby on Rails, back end, Node.js and Crystalling. We're just gonna try it right now with the Node.js service. Yeah, so, and can you mention, by the way, what did you have to do to get this integration working? Cause I know it's not part of regular Docker, Docker desktop yet. Thank you for that. That is such a great point. Um, so let's actually go to the docs, which I swear I had open and <laughs> I don't have them open anymore. So as you can see, I'm very prepared. Uh, Unboxing, right? <laughs> just spend 10, 10 minutes of just me trying to find this link. This is an awesome job, Adam. Uh, let's see here. We have the docs somewhere, but yes, there is a setup process because this is in beta. So as Brent mentioned, this is beta. Um, you have to download the latest edge uh, version of Docker desktop. Oh my goodness, where did it go? I'm hoping Brent in the background is also I see. helping. Oh, oh, sorry. I, <laughs> I was just enjoying the, the struggle. So. Uh, the struggle <laughs> is real indeed. All right, um, let's see, maybe if I go to Carmen's blog, which is where I was. Not funny. Okay. We will find it. I promise everybody here. So I'm going to just do a quick search. Is it here? Yeah. Do a and here it is. Okay. This is what happens when you live in my brain is there's, I have 10,000 browser windows open each with their own 10,000 tabs with most likely sub tabs in them somehow. Okay. So <laughs> are sub tabs really a thing or am I just missing out? I don't think they're a thing, but I just okay, made them a thing. Okay, so there are some prerequisites. So one is that you download uh, the latest uh, desktop Docker Desktop Edge version, and this works on Mac or Windows. And there is also integration for Linux as well. Um, so for, for today, we're doing it on Mac. So I, I've downloaded the latest Edge version of uh, Docker Desktop. And so here's the thing that if you're familiar with uh, working with the AWS CLI at all, generally we have what's called like the provider chain. So um, if I don't have my credentials locally on my workstation, I can go to uh, the, the, the CLI or the CDK behind the scenes is gonna look, do I have environment variables that set my credentials? Am I on a, a host that has a role assigned to it or a, a some sort of instance or resource that has the permission to run this? And if not, it also then checks that local um, AWS credentials file. So for this, it looks like you do have to run AWS configure. So basically we have to configure a local credentials file to get this up and running. So I already did that. So I ran AWS configure. So I have my, my key access key ID and secret all set up. And all you're going to do is run Docker ECS setup. So actually I'm going to do that right now, which I've already done, but let's see while you're doing that. Let's just, Let's just comment real quick. Again, we know it's beta, but we would like to see you know a better uh, usage of the AWS SDK, where it could pick up your credentials from your environment. And you aren't having to save them, you know, out to a file on your on your drive and stuff like that. That would be really nice to see. And and Randall asked a question: Is this integration open source? It is. This is yes. an open source integration, um, and we can share that as well. So we will share that. So I'm going through the Docker ECS setup process. And what this does is this sets up um, basically a, a context. So in the concept of, of, or context of the Docker ecosystem, the Docker CLI, you can have different contexts. So the default is your, your local host, you know, Docker running on local host, but I'm going to set up the context to be the AWS provider, which is then going to deploy this to ECS. So we're going to go back to it. So as I'm here, okay, so context name, I named it AWS. I'm pointing to my default. 
and cluster name. I'm just going to leave this blank and let it default to whatever they want to create. And then we'll keep the region. We'll, we'll just stick with US East 1. Enter credentials. This is if I wanted to actually enter my credentials through the command line. I don't like doing that. Frankly, as Brent said, I don't like having credentials anywhere on my machine. I like to keep them temporary. So that is something following that provider chain down the road would be really awesome. Okay, so we're set up. So now we're gonna go to the next step. So we're gonna run a Docker context LS. So this is gonna show us the different providers we have. Super hard to read here, but um, what you can see is you have our your name. So we have AWS and default, and then the type, and then any type of details about that context. So, Randall's wondering if he can make this work with SSO. That would be awesome. I, I don't, I'm betting at this stage, I don't think you can since you have to enter credentials, or at least it would be the, the credentials would be so temporary that uh, they might not work. And he's accepted the challenge. So <laughs> it, I wonder, is, are, when awesome. you say SSO, I wonder AWS SSO, I assume that's what oh, we're yeah. talking about. That could be. I was thinking like, uh, you know, when you have an enterprise login through Okta or something like that. Yeah, AWS SSO. So, and I know we have, um, I think just recently released some API endpoints for SSO. I don't, I'm not entirely certain, but awesome. That would be terrific. Okay. All right. Maybe, that's what, maybe we need to have Randall on tomorrow to show us what he did. Because you know, it's going to be done. <laughs> By tomorrow. Exactly. Like pull requests out. submitted to the upstream project and all. <laughs> oh man. All right. Okay. So I, I've have the context set up. So we've gone through the prerequisites. Not too bad. Um, a couple things. When I was setting this up earlier, I did run into some challenges. Um, and the root of the challenge is just make sure your credentials file, your AWS credentials file, is is clean, um, and that when you set this up, you're, you're passing in. The, the proper profile and all that. So just kind of some, some gotchas that I experienced when setting this up. Okay, so let's go back here and we're gonna look at our, our compose file again. Now, when you run Docker compose, generally this is something you run locally, right? This is a, to, to get that developer experience. I want to test my changes live. I wanna keep iterating, keep you know spinning my containers up, test my change, bring my containers down. So Compose allows us to do that. So if I were to run a Docker Compose, oh, I'm sorry, so Docker Compose up, this is going to look at that Compose spec and it's going to run those two services that I've defined in that Docker Compose spec locally on my machine. And as you can see, our front end failed, which is awesome. Um, but <laughs> I'll have to look at why, but the point is, what it's done is it, it's it's brought up my Node.js backend and my uh, and my my Rails front end, and oh, I see, I, I just have the port wrong. So let's uh, let's go to the ECS demo front end. You got there, Brent. I see something popped up. Yeah, I just I I'm just gonna uh, audible what Randall says. That's what you get for using Rails. Uh, totally, we. I picked Rails. We picked Rails on purpose. We wanted the slowest language that we could think of. Um, so yeah, and it's it it's uh it's been interesting. It's been fun. So, but you know, it's it's nice to introduce these kinds of challenges so that uh, so that we can see failure and we can learn from it. Exactly. So we're gonna build this image um, now. So I was just I realized I was pointing to. Um, I was exposing in the Docker file. Let's actually look at that. So, you know, if you're familiar with the Docker file, when you're exposing a service on a specific port, generally in your mm -hmm. Docker file, you explicitly use the expose instruction and then your port. So I was exposing it on 3000 and I need to expose it on 80. Brent, do you want to say, explain why I had to do that? Do you remember from earlier what I was dealing with? Uh, the I, I only remember the health check being a problem, but I don't think that's related to expose necessarily, but maybe that's what you're thinking of. Right, well, so yeah, I was, it, it looks like with this integration as I was testing it out, um, when the front end is working with the back end, when, when you have two services, 
I, but all of our services in the, in the, the, the context of our workshops, all, all are exposed on the same port, port 3000. And that was intentional, by the way, I, I believe Brent to show that you don't deal with port collision. Uh, there, here's how to work around it, service discovery, et cetera. Well, in the case of, of the, the Docker composed ECS integration, it looks like you, in order, when you expose the ports, it also tries to create a target group on that, that load balancer that's listening on the same port. So long story short, that's why I'm changing it to port 80. So they run on different ports. Okay. So now we're going to just push that. Push. Let's see if your video like pixelates. Oh, because I'm uploading. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's yeah. good. Massive upload. Am I am I pixelated? 216 megabytes. Woo. Yeah, sorry about that. That's gonna bring down my internet. This is a uh, this is another good time to plug Cloud Nine. We uh, normally use Cloud Nine on the show, and and um, you know this is this is a great reason to do it because you know the bandwidth at Adam's house isn't amazing, um, but Cloud Nine would have would have solved that problem for us. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's could have been worse, but not too bad. But anyway, so now it's pushed, and we're gonna go back actually here. I already forgot the name of my image. Let's do this. We're going to copy. Now we're going to go back to our, our compose file. Okay. And we're going to change our image to this latest one. I hope that I don't have to rebuild it. Okay. Docker compose up. And again, Docker compose up is going to spin up containers uh, that I've defined in my compose spec. So there we go. So we have our front end and we have our back end running. So I'm looking at the logs. It still says 3000. <laughs> so that's awesome. But anyways, I think for the sake of, of this demo, we're okay. Let's see. So if I curl our Node.js service, I'm going to go to another tab here and let's look at Docker PS. So I could also do Docker compose PS, which will show me all of my, uh, apps running in Docker Compose. Let's do it again. There you go. So I have my front end. I also have my Node.js service. If I were to curl localhost, and so if you look here, I, I haven't defined a port for my Node.js service. What? Man, I'm just confusing myself today. But anyway, so here you could see my, my, my back end's running uh, and it, it's looking good. So let's go back. And let's shut this down. So that was composed. So now what I've done is I was testing locally. I working through changes, running it locally. Now I want to actually see what this looks like in a real world environment with container orchestration and not my local computer. Yeah. So, so this would be where like a developer would say, okay, I got it running on my computer. I'm, I'm happy. I want to show it to someone else. Um, let me, let me launch it out onto the cloud. Exactly. So I am actually because I'm just perfectionist here. I realized I'm not exposing this on three thousand on eighty. That was a lie. I just lied to everyone here. I apologize for that. I just wanted to remove the health check. That was all. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. You got it now. Okay. Do you have to rebuild? Yeah. And I think you might, if you're going to launch this out onto ECS, you'll need to push this to a public repo. Indeed, that is the case. So let's do that. Didn't I, didn't I push it earlier? I feel like you did, but I don't think your, your, like your Docker Compose doesn't call it from there, maybe. This is why I don't work locally, by the way. Like, my local <laughs> terminal is so jacked up. Okay. So... <laughs> I, like I, I don't even know if there was a slash in there. Okay, so now I'm just pushing my Docker image up. It was not. It looks like slash didn't make it. Okay, and I'm not logged in. Things are going so well right now. Let's actually point it, Brent. Let's just point it to your image. Okay. We can just you know go from there. Let's comment this out. 
and then this is EC, uh, currently ECS demo front end. And then we'll just keep it like that. Okay. All right. So now let's actually run a, now let's, let's deploy this to uh, ECS. Okay. So here's how this is going to work. So we're going to run, uh, so before when we were doing this locally, we ran Docker compose up. So it's slightly different here. We're going to run Docker. We're going to define our context. Now I could have from, from the context, I could have set my, my context using a Docker context command to be AWS, but I'd rather just pass it in as a parameter so I can continue to test locally. And I know when I want to push it up to ECS, I'm explicitly going to pass context in to my command line. That's up to you. So it's you're using that as kind of like a, a gate or something so that you don't accidentally mess up what's on the cloud? Exactly. Or it just so that way I just don't even deploy to the cloud if I don't want to. Gotcha. Right. So if I, which I think is probably the more common way to, you know, way that, uh, developers develop is they, you know, they iterate locally as much as they can, and then they push it, um, you know, when they think they have something. So that makes sense. Exactly. Okay. So what we have here is I wanted to actually just do, uh, some, some help output just to show what's available with the command line. So, um, we ran Docker context, AWS, ECS, and then compose. Now I can do up, which obviously is going to deploy a, an environment in AWS. I could do PS, which will actually show me what containers I have running in AWS. And then I can actually view logs as well. So when you look at this, something really cool to just think about is there's things that I'm not having to consider as a developer. VPCs, subnets, internet gateways, all that stuff that frankly, as a developer, just trying to test this in AWS, I don't really care about because I just care about my application. So behind the scenes, the integration with Docker and ECS is it's going to create a load balancer, VPC, all those things that we want. Now, if you want to pass in existing VPC, or existing load balancer, you can do that as well. And we'll, we'll look over that in a little bit. Cool. That comes up all the time. I already have a VPC. Um, why do I need a new one? So I'm glad that they thought of that. Me too. And especially like in you know larger enterprises where they kind of predefine their networks already, um, it's just common, right? This, this is, every company's different. Yeah, like I've been, I've talked to a few enterprises where they'll have like, uh, you know, a dedicated network team that sort of manages the IP space and that team will, will build the VPC for you and then hand it off to you. And so you have to target an existing one. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, the last thing before I deploy, I wanted to show was there is a, a command, um, called convert. So that, that you pass into your ECS compose, um, as a parameter. This will actually show you the cloud formation that is going to be deployed on your behalf via Docker integration with ECS. That's so, nice. So you could inspect actually, it and figure out, you know, like it, what's it doing? It's not a black box. Exactly. And I wanted to run a word count on that. So this is deploying 602 lines of cloud formation. That's 602 lines of cloud formation that I didn't have to think about, which to me is great, right? Totally. Like, <laughs> so what do you? What did you have to think about? You have the Docker file, which you have to think about no matter what. Yep. You have the Docker Compose file, which you probably have to think about from the DevX experience. You know, mm -hmm. you're gonna if you if you're more than a single developer shop, then you know you probably need to be able to hand someone something and say this is our environment and and a lot of shops do that using docker compose so um was there anything else your credentials which you have to do for aws yeah was that it and, and it's just my code and your code yeah of course <laughs> yeah. so uh that's pretty cool you know not having to come up with all the cloud formation um and we talk about this on the show a lot you know what what what's a time? What can help save time, and what can help uh, shorten that learning curve? Uh, getting to 
um, you know, getting your app deployed into the cloud in a good way. So that's always the, not even the star, but like, you know, the, the additional point of it is don't just get it running in the cloud, get it running the way it should be running. So exactly. that's pretty cool. And, and all, you know, just think about the, the, the developer experience. I'm using one tool, just one command line utility here, which is Docker, which is industry standard, right? Docker is pretty well known across the board here. So yeah, totally. That's pretty cool to think about. All right, enough talk. Let's get this deployed. Yeah. So we're going to do Docker context, AWS, ECS, and then we're going to do compose. Up. And what we're going to see in the, what's going to happen is it's going to create all of these services, everything that we just saw in, uh, in the, in the JSON, in that cloud formation, it's going to create that for us. And what you're seeing here is this is all the resources that are be cr being created in uh, CloudFormation, and then it's responding back with the, the status on those um, resources being created. Just one thing to just know, it's, it's gonna take a while for that load balancer to deploy. But this is deploying a front-end load balancer, an ECS cluster, a service discovery na namespace in CloudMap because our front-end talks to our back-end on CloudMap, uh, via CloudMap service discovery. So, and I see Richard Boyd. Oh boy, we really have a, a, a full house today of, of stars. This is a star studded event here. Richard Boyd, ladies and gentlemen. And there was a question <laughs> Is this cloud formation? And then he said, boring. <laughs> so, so it is cloud formation. But, Richard, I'm going to challenge that boring with it is boring, yes, but I don't have to do anything with the cloud formation. The cloud formation to me as the person deploying this is completely transparent because I agree. Cloud yeah. Formation. Cloud formation, when you don't have, when you get to extrapolate yourself away from it is pretty nice all over again because you're not, you don't have to write it, but it also has a lot of built, built in niceties like um, automatic retries. It can go out and talk to all the different APIs and it understands what they're, you know what the different API limits are, and and it can it can understand dependencies and layering and, and all that stuff. So since you don't have to come up with all of that, and now you don't have to write it yourself, um, you know it's it's back to being pretty nice. Not yeah. that it was ever not nice. It was just you know it had it had its challenges. Right, and it's it's right. We're not knocking cloud formation. Listen, it's just when. If you were to write this all on your own via the SDKs or, uh, you know, by yourself, you have to think about retries. You have to think about all these things uh, on your own, which which is hard and and requires yeah. a lot of coding. And there's a, there's a good chance you're not going to get it right on the the tenth try or the hundredth try. CloudFormation yeah. has so exactly. And he clarified. He said someone else's boring infrastructure is the best kind of infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, like the less we have to think about it, the better. Yeah. Yep, and and it's uh, listen. Your code, your your infrastructure is created as code JSON, you know. And I prefer you know CDK, of course. But at the end of the day, it's all cloud formation under the covers here. So yep. we've got to give cloud formation some love. Which brings up another uh, point. Nico Nico Vertala says, "Yeah, but uh, it's still my infra. I need to care about it." And you can, and that's what's cool about it is. You can you can push up, you know, run a command that generates and pushes cloud formation for you, and then you can just expect that everything you know should come up and start working. But if you ever need to go and like introspect and figure out like what exactly was built, uh, you can dive all the way down into that, all the way down to the VM level if you have to, if that's what if that's what was being built. In our case. We're building an ECS cluster. That ECS cluster, did we did it bring up Fargate tasks? It did. Yes. So it's only Fargate no, right now. Yeah. So there's no uh, EC2 instances to have to worry about managing. So we have we have our containers. Fargate's managing the execution plane, and then we have our load balancer and uh, CloudFormation. You know, managed provisioning and configuring that for us. Um, and then I think we let it build the VPC and the subnets and all that stuff, right? But we yeah. could have targeted that. 
So that's exactly. that's pretty cool. That that seems pretty easy. So so it looks like it's just finishing up some commands, but as I was just running through here, here's my mm -hmm. ECS cluster. So it named it for me. Remember, I didn't name the cluster, I let it name it for me. So it named it Docker ECS. And <laughs> It's your bike. We have we have a couch right there. It's right at the That's bottom. right. We started with the couch, but yeah, we you know we came over to uh, to uh, the computer to desktop share. Exactly. So okay. So here's my cluster. I have my two services running. Um, if you look at my my front end service, uh, it has a load balancer, so it's attached to a target group. It did all this for me. It added this to service discovery. I, nothing talks to my front end via service discovery, but I have an endpoint there if somehow I was going to. Um, and then let's go back to my Node.js service, which is how we're going to talk from my front end to the back end. Okay. And this is the endpoint that it's going to talk on. So the way it works in the Compose, uh, Docker Compose with ECS functionality is it's going to be your service name dot your cluster name dot local. So that, that's how it'll work um, for service cool. discovery. So pretty easy. And it set all that up for us. We didn't have to do anything. It's setting it up using cloud map. And it looks like it also includes uh, the Route 53 uh, integration with the A records and stuff. So we could do DNS discovery, or we could query an API endpoint to discover uh, our endpoints, our backend services. Yes. OK, so it's done. It deployed. Everything's complete. One thing that I'd like to see is when it's done, I want it to tell me my load balancer URL. That would be kind of nice to have. Yeah, that would uh, be. But let's do a, a, a Docker Compose PS. And it didn't like something. <clears throat> so it looks like something wasn't tagged properly. Front end service. Is that, is that an old service or the current service? Like... Could that be stale from earlier when we were messing around? Possibly, but I feel like that would be in our task definition. Yeah, there's only two two services defined, and they're both up and running. So, um, yeah. Hmm. So that's interesting. Um, so that might be something to look for. What are yeah? So what are the tags? Well, I, I skipped that. I'm just going to go straight to the load balancer because I want to just okay. see if this is up. So, okay. We, now we went to the target group. We're going to go to the load balancer. Let's get that URL and let's see what it looks like. All right. We're going to copy that DNS name. And my guess is it went to the Node.js. Because... Sweet. Okay, so okay, well, so here's what we did. We did, we deployed our front end and our back end as front ends. Our front end doesn't work, but our back end is accessible via the front end load balancer. That's right. Uh, and again, beta. Uh, we're just getting started, so you know we're we're gonna have some hiccups. Yeah, so that's actually really interesting. I'm not sure what exactly we did there. Um, so what, what do we have? We have the listener port 80 and port 3000 one of them is forwarding okay so 3000 is is forwarding to the front end is is there anything help uh what is that initializing so it the health checks initializing my my guess is that it's potentially not reporting healthy yeah and i think um, i think i might have a bro broken health check in that did wait we oh but you went back to using my check. and you went back to using my image yes didn't you? but actually that makes me wonder we probably need to oh no it's just healthy lies it's healthy oh let's test it then hey it works sweet so okay. uh yeah i can't even pronounce this name uh, the Great, <laughs> Shravas the Great. Uh, the demo gods are not in our favor today. I mean, we knew this going in. We're 
Yeah. We're going to live demo, uh, you know, beta software without really having tested it before. So yeah, we expected this, but that said, that's how you learn from stuff. So uh, troubleshooting and figuring out, you know, what's going on. Yeah. So, so it did. So, so we have our, our front end exposed. I think the only problem is uh, we, we just, we have to figure out how to expose the back end properly, but Really quick, one thing I want to say is our front end is talking to our back end on service discovery. Huh. So that's, that's actually cool. really cool. So it is working. We, we don't, yeah. unfortunately, it, because of our, we hard code some things in our front end app that we need to resolve. But in the meantime, like, no, go so ahead. let's just, I know we can't do this with Docker Compose, uh, but can you manually just scale up the, the container count for the back end. And what we'll do, what that would end up doing is we would see it start to rotate through the IP addresses. That's a great idea. Deploying 10. Sweet. Um, yeah, oh, so, and that actually brings up another point again, beta, um, is if I want, if I modified my compose file, I added a new environment variable, something different. It will not, um, I can't update my environment in AWS. I would have to bring it down and then redeploy. So look, let's just actually show that. Yeah. And it's going to tell me we do not yet support updating an existing CloudFormation stack, which is, it's cool. Like it says, we, we don't support it yet, which means right. I'm sure it's on the roadmap. It's in the works. Yeah. And again, beta, you know, we, yeah. we expect this kind of stuff. So it's good to get stuff out there, start to get, uh, you know, people using it and reviewing it and, and uh, providing feedback and stuff like that. Yeah. So basically what, what we've done here is we've taken our service, our services, we've deployed them locally using Docker Compose. So I was able to test my front end locally does it you know, work with the back end? Obviously, it didn't work for me, but that was just a me problem. But then from there, I was able to take that, that same, same code, that okay, and that same spec that defined my local environment, and I was able to just push that to AWS without me having to change or do anything. It was all based off of the spec. So now we have more tasks coming up. So if we go back to our front end, at some point here, we should see some of these um, IP addresses start to rotate in and out. Yeah, let's, let's, um, so someone had asked also about, I think it was Randall asked about the, the plugin. So here we have, um, let's see, I'm gonna, this is the, oh, the, the repo. Is that for, for Brent to, to put in the chat? So this is the, the open, it's open source, um, but this is for the ECS plugin. So, you know, beauty of open source is if you want to submit a pull request, there's something you want, go for it. And they do have a roadmap as well um, for this product so and this integration. So we'll, we'll link that as well shortly. But anyways, just in case anyone was, was curious. So, cool. Yeah. So if we go back, let's look at the front end. There you go. So now you can see our front end is talking to our back end through service discovery, which was all set up for us. And here are our services. So this is yeah. proof that it's working. That's really That's cool. cool. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So the the things that don't still work um, are, are basically, it comes down to things that um, we kind of, the way we have our container built, you know, it's not really jiving well with this particular setup. But that's really my, you know, that's really an us problem. Um, but yeah, everything else, everything else seems to work really well. I mean, that's 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 pretty cool. The, the one thing I haven't been able to figure out is I don't want our Node.js service. So this is our backend service. I don't want to expose it through the front end load balancer. So that's something earlier I had just tried to deploy it with um, by defining the port. And when I define the port, 
it's putting it's automatically registering into the load balancer. So something we need to just figure out is, and I'm sure it's there, we're just missing it. But in the examples I found online, it was basically they didn't define a port and it just somehow worked. I think it still might do that. Let's take it down and try it. Okay, let's do it. Since we know this works, you know, like mental snapshot, and now let's take out the port definition and um, kill it all and bring it back and let's see what happens. Perfect. You know what? While that's on its way down, why don't we do this? Let's let's spin up a new cluster. So, okay. Good idea. I like the way you think because this is the cloud. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what am I waiting on here? I got plenty of resources available. Um, okay, so we'll do. Oh no, actually, is it setup? I already forgot. Jeez, Docker, ECS setup. Yes. Okay. Context name. We'll stick with AWS, but we'll use my default profile and cluster name is going to be. Do it live. Region. We'll stick with US East One. Enter mm -hmm. credentials. Absolutely not. And let's do it. So Docker context, remember I'm switching my context to use AWS mm -hmm. and we're going to say ECS, compose. Let's do a quick convert. The convert shows me the cloud formation, which is pretty darn fast. Um, I guess that's the beauty of Go. Is this written in Go? Mm -hmm. um, and then if we do a word count, that looks cool. One thing I wanna look for though, actually when I run this is I am curious see port see so we see port 3000 i don't see any reference to port 80 though so that is now strange. our front end was listening on 3000 wasn't it and yes. then was it our back end that was listening on port 80 correct okay so my theory is that they build a, a, and let's do this after it comes up, but I suspect that they build a security group that encompasses all of the services and just allows traffic. Let's see. That, and, that's going to be my theory. And by the way, naming the cluster was a bad idea because it's expecting that cluster to exist. So oh. now we know. I didn't realize that. Okay. Enter credentials. No. Let's do it again. Oh, okay. So, okay. It looks like we have to wait for it to come down. <laughs> um, unless, you know, maybe I can change something in my compose. Front end new. No JS. I don't That's going to change the service name. We're, we're opening Pandora's box here. All right. Let's not do that. Let's keep that box closed. But by the way, um, Let's see here. Stitchy E says uh, down brings all the load balancers down and everything. And and yeah, it's going to delete anything that's in the cloud formation. So um, yeah, it, it basically owns all the resources that it has put into the cloud formation and, and it's just going to delete that stuff. So yeah. And I had the reason I think what was holding up this delete was my extra tasks I deployed. Yeah, quite possible. And this is My why, fault. lesson, don't do anything in the console. Do it in code. True. Yeah. If we, if there was a way for us to have updated that in CloudFormation, then it probably would have been fine. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you do something in the console that's outside of, uh, out of the code, make sure you, you, you write it down and you remember. Otherwise, <laughs> you could spend hours trying to figure out what, what's going on. Yeah, those are some hard lessons learned in our in our past for sure. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, so actually, you know, we could even go to let's go to cloud formation and just see what's going on. You know, another thing you could try though is switching regions. Oh, that's a good point. Let's do that. Let's switch the region because time is not on our side here. Right. Okay, so let's do this again. Yep. Default. No cluster name, and let's do US West 2. Credentials, no. Oh. Okay. And I just closed that window, that terminal. Uh, okay. <laughs> Docker, context, ECS, AWS. 
ECS Compose up. Let's, there we go. Great idea, Brent. This is why. I do all the time. I have stuff running in so many regions. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So now it's creating. And then what, what we'll want to see is what's happening. Once it's up, we're going to want to see, can we talk on the back end um, to our other services? So let's see. So we got it deploying now. Yeah. And we should like drill into that, the security group that the two services, you know, get put into, what are its rules and stuff like that. Cause I bet, like, I, th I think that's, that's my theory on how all this magic works is through security groups. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, I'm trying to understand still, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. You, you expose a port though. And we but I think, you know, because of AWS VPC mode, uh, where your container just gets its own ENI attached to it, then anything that that's listening on, you'd be able to send traffic into. So as long as the security group allows, uh, you know, that traffic to pass in, I think it's going to work. So that's an interesting perspective. We're going to see if that's the case. So coming back to our new cluster, that's, here we go. So we have our Node.js service coming up. We could even drill down, take a look at the service. So it's in service so, discovery. Yep, and security group, o, what is that, OE6 something or other? Let's take a look. Okay. So we look at our inbound rules. Yeah. Yep, all, all traffic on that security group, from that security group. So if the other service is also put into the same security group, then that could it, that could be how you know it's allowed to pass all the traffic. That's very interesting. So, okay, and I'm not sure that I like that necessarily. I mean, I I get it, but I think we could be a little bit more tight with those rules um, in the future. So maybe another beta, you know, thing to thing to check on is like, be more explicit and don't just go all, all. Agreed. I mean, I think that's just generally best practice, right? Good yep. practice. I don't like best practice. Good practice though, is to limit the scope. Don't, don't open to the world. Even if it's private in a, in a private subnet, you still want to be very explicit with what you're yeah. in and out. And, and to be fair, we aren't allowing everything from everywhere. We're allowing everything from one other container. So um, the, only the members of that security group are allowed to pass all the traffic uh, or use all the ports. Uh, it's not like we're opening up to the world or anything like that. So like I said, it's it could be worse, but yeah, but I think the way it is could still be better. I think there's enough information there that it could be better. Okay, so we're just waiting for this task to come up. It's on its way. And then while we wait for that, I'm actually going to go to the load balancer. Let's see how that looks. And where's my DNS name? Let's go to the load balancer. And that, that, that's a good point. It, it is open. Just a cool thing just about uh, AWS and security groups, one of the neat features is you don't have to, you can allow access between services through by attaching just a security group ID. So you can yep. control communication via IDs and you don't even have to say this IP address or this IP range. You say anything that has this security group attached to it can talk to this security group. Yep. I always, I, I know this is going to date me. Um, I'm not as old as this TV show, but I did used to watch it in reruns. Uh, but I always think of security groups, like I think of uh, Maxwell Smart and the Cone of Silence. Um, you know, if you're like in the Cone of Silence, you can talk to everyone else that's in the Cone of Silence. But if you're not in the Cone of Silence, you don't get to talk to everyone. I, I think you may have just come up with my favorite <laughs> analogy ever. I love that analogy. That is so good. Oh, it's so true. The cone of silence. 
Get Smart is the show. If you haven't seen it, yes, great show. I used to watch it on Nick at Night as a kid. So, yep. Um, Load balancers is not ready yet. It's not like health checks coming up and all that. Let's actually let's go back to the load balancer. I want to see. Let's go to the the target group. Let's see how we're doing from a health perspective. Mm -hmm. Targets. There we go. So it's still coming up and registering cool. in the health the health check. But once that comes up, we should have our answer. So it's let's actually let's look at the logs too. You know what? I'm oh, not gonna do it from here. Yes, I was about to say we need to we need to look at that. So yeah, so so here are the logs. I see the Node.js service, I see front end. So it looks like the front end has come up. Go back and show me that command again. Let's do it. So we can't. And by the way, it does. It looks like it does a live tail of that. Do you want me to do like a help? No, I was just I was just looking because uh, Docker compo Docker Compose logs is when I'm running Docker Compose locally on my laptop. That's my go to for looking at logs because I get to see all the logs mixed together from all the services that are defined in my Docker Compose file. So I I like that they have you know kept that syntax. Uh, matching, so I can see all of my uh, services in my one compose file, um, yeah. and see all those logs. So that's cool. Yeah, that's again, it's that that experience of I'm using just one command line utility to do all of this for me. Yep. So it looks like it's not coming up. Um, maybe did I type the wrong name? That's possible. Let's take a look. Actually, let's go back. Let's see. I thought you copy pasted it. So did I. So it's still still coming up. I I wonder if just maybe there's something we did wrong here. Um, but port 3000. And then if we go back to our service, I'm listening on port 3000. Mm -hmm. Are the tasks healthy? Task is healthy. Looks okay. good. Yeah. So I see it's... This just sounds, this feels to me like maybe we just missed something because we deployed this earlier. Yeah, or we haven't waited long enough. I mean, I know ALB has its own uh, set of timing. So it would basically, the containers would have to come up, then they would have to go healthy, then the target group would have to show them healthy. Um, so... What's the so it's sending to the traffic port, which should be good. Yeah. Timeout ten seconds, unhealthy. Hmm. Still an initial. I don't yeah, I don't know. Let's see, let's refresh. Let's do a hard refresh. Maybe it's something cached. No. So anyway. So uh while we're waiting, uh Carlos Curado uh, wants to know, is there somewhere we can see when these sessions are going to happen? I mean, do you schedule in advance somewhere? I just want to reserve the time. Well, I'm glad you asked uh, because we actually, uh, our schedule is going to be Monday through Thursday, 12 o'clock Pacific time to one o'clock Pacific time, or if you're Eastern, uh, three o'clock to four o'clock. If you're like me and you're in central time, then two o'clock to three o'clock. Uh, you know, I'll leave it up to you to translate any of the other time zones. But we're going to be uh, doing this show Monday through Thursday. And each day is going to be something container related, but it's going to be different each day. Like today is an unboxing where we're kind of, uh, you know, stumbling and fumbling our way through something that we don't know a lot about. Uh, but then, you know, uh, tomorrow it's going to be something different. We actually haven't even decided yet. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday... Uh, we just weren't waiting long enough, were we? Yeah, that was it. Just weren't waiting See? long enough. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> true time zone. That's that's worth popping up on the screen. I don't, what um, does that even mean? The true time zone is that UTC? UTC. Oh, God, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, we're I think Wednesday and Thursday we're going to have a guest on uh, Jesse Butler. Uh, Jesse, if you're out there and listening, get ready. Um, and he's going to be talking to us about AppMesh and uh, integrating AppMesh into EKS. 
So I think that's going to be, you know, a really cool series. It's going to be two parts because we're going to do uh, on Wednesday, we're going to do the sort of getting getting started, getting it going. And then Thursday is going to be kind of some more uh, advanced functionality that you can do. And then uh, morbid, morbid dreams. I love these names, uh, especially <laughs> when I can announce the, uh, when I can announce uh, pronounce them. Sorry. Um, asks, are they being recorded uh, so that you can view it later? And I'm going to paste a link now uh, th that should lead you to the Twitch video archive for this channel. And those will be up for a couple of weeks at least. Um, and then for a lot of the videos, especially ones that are related to our workshop content and stuff like that, we'll actually embed um, the video sessions into eksworkshop.com and ecsworkshop.com. So, um, you know, when you go to those workshops at the beginning of each chapter, you might find a related video that was shot on this show. Exactly. So I'm going to post some, some links in here just to, to wrap up, but I want to say, I think the experience was actually, it was pretty good. I think we have, just with our applications, some things we need to work out, but totally, we need some, we need to refactor the app just a bit. Yeah. But I mean, we were able to basically just take an app, deploy it locally. Um, you know, when we felt comfortable, we wanted to see what it was like in a, in a real environment using the same command line utility using Docker. I was able to just say Docker ECS compose up, deployed it to ECS service discovery was integrated. Load balancer was set up for my front end. I didn't have to think about any of that. So really cool. And of course it's in beta. There's going, it's going to continue to grow. There is a roadmap available, which I'd like to find. Um, we'll, but we'll actually, we'll share some of the blogs. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it though. Really cool. cool. Really good experience. Yeah. yeah. If you guys run into any issues, open them on their GitHub, open issues on their GitHub page. And otherwise, uh, follow Adam and I, our Twitter handles are below and, uh, give us a follow. We'll be announcing our shows, uh, usually at least a couple hours before we go live and you can plan on us going live, uh, every Monday through Thursday, uh, you know, the same time Monday through Thursday. Exactly. Cool. All right. Thank you everyone. And we'll see you tomorrow.